So here at the Carson City District Attorney's Office to follow up on their new sign and uh, try to do a public records request for the complaint that I filed against Deputy Jason Bueno, or as I like to call him, No Bueno. So here's the new sign, Marcy's Law. Prohibited, so they're Article 1, Section 9 of the Nevada Constitution. They're trying to override with Article 1, Section 8A. where it looks like so if you want a mask and for those of you that listened to the hearings with Dr. Fauci recently talking about the masks well we still got masks here hey Jason how are you doing I'm okay how are you Life is good. Good. Um, I wanted to do a public records request. Okay. And also wanted to ask you about your sign. Uh huh. How do, can you override Article One, Section Nine, with Article One, Section Eight A? It's our interpretation that a that a victim of a crime has has a right to privacy and right um, has a right not to be filmed without their consent. That's right. Our and and there's case law that says that the government, you, have to create that privacy for that person. You can't take a public space and say we deny the press access to this public space because this person is a special person and deserves these rights and I would argue that I am a victim of crime based on what happened with my unlawful arrest. So cause I'm thinking about the sheriff's got the same sign, you've got that sign and again how do you how do you overcome article uh, one section nine that says no law shall be passed to abridge the right to speech in the press. Right. I think that's pretty close to okay. To I, what that I understand says. what you're saying. I I have my interpretation. Right. Well. So. Well. But I and and I'm I'm trying not to be litigious. I'm going to be litigious eventually with some of this stuff. Right. But I think the case law really does support what I'm saying. Um, if you've got some cases, I'd be happy well, well, to look at them. I've, I've looked at the cases that's cited in the material that, that you sent. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have additional material, I'm well, this, always happy to look th at This right here, this, this is, I just picked this up from uh, the second judicial in Washoe. And this was decided uh, just last week. Okay. And what this case is, is this called Laura versus the State of Nevada. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you know anything about that, but this was a guy that got pulled over on I-80. And he's a Marine, and he was traveling from Lubbock, Texas, to Portola, California. And the Nevada Highway Patrol seized $87,000 of his oh, hard-earned cash. Howdy, how are you, Jason? I'm okay. And, and what this is that I'm seeing here is, and the reason I'm interested in is, how are the Nevada courts dealing with these tort oppression of rights cases mm -hmm. that the MAC decision has brought forward. Now this one started before the MAC decision came out and it's also being pushed by the Institute for Justice mm -hmm. and this is uh, what this is is uh, their decision denying the motion to, to dismiss and allowing it to go forward to trial. Okay. Um, it also is uh, getting into 42032 and how the state can get out of it or the individuals can get out of it and it's laying down some, some new rules that I'm seeing with, within that. Okay. Um, and if you do want to read that, that section is on page 21 as I recall. Okay. But that's, that's some interesting case law. Because like I said, I think what you're doing with denying filming because for, for the way that I operate, and I know there's other human beings like me, we're all different. Um, I'm not the only person in the world that records. There are other individuals out there. Um, the First Amendment auditors that are much more aggressive than I am 
um, they're, they're probably going to push you a lot harder and stuff. And I, I would say, you know, if, if I was in here, and maybe I'll go ask the sheriff this, because he did have uh, Jason Bueno was over there, right, as I call him, no bueno. Uh, it was under threat of arrest that they told me that I needed to leave the sheriff's office. And I was un unable to ask for public records, and I was unable to file my criminal complaint with the sheriff's office because of Marcy's law when I was, in fact, the victim. So I, I was a victim who was trying to go into the sheriff's office and report a crime that I was denied to be reported, and I was denied access to the counter to get public records. So there, there, there's a contradiction here. So you're using Marcy's law against the guy that records under Article 1-9, and then you're using Article 1-8-A to tell me that I can't file the criminal complaint. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that seem a little bit backwards? I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, we've looked at it. There's, uh, as as you well know, um, there are uh, time, place, and manner restrictions that can be put in place. You can't go well, record the bathroom. For well, instance. well, time. Well, but the bathroom is not a publicly accessible. I don't know today in today's world where you've got all the gender fluidity and all of those questions. Maybe it is a public place. Maybe you can record there. No, top, top, well, well, I mean, that, well, that's, that's an interesting question yeah. because of the way that those lines have been blurred with people questioning what is your gender right. and, and how that's come about. Now, now I'm, I'm a very firm believer in XX and XY chromosomes, and I don't believe there's a lot of gray in the middle. I don't think I'm a giraffe today. <laughs> to, to me, the whole thing seems rather silly. If, if, if you are born with a penis, go to the men's room. If you're born with a vagina, go to the women's room and don't record in there, give people their privacy. But on the other hand, this space right here, this is a publicly accessible area. I'm here during normal business hours, uh, time, normal business hours, place, publicly accessible area to access records, manner, have, have I ever been disrespectful or rude or, or, or intimidating to anybody? Or have I just stood back and said, the only thing I'm doing is recording my personal interactions with my government? And, and if you're doing that, time, place, and manner, how am I violating any of those? Well, you're not, because there's not a victim in right. here. And if there were a victim, how would I know that's a victim, and how would you know that they want privacy? So is, is, the, is it incumbent upon you and your office to say, hey, you're a victim, you need some privacy, which, so we can go gather this information from you in private, and you don't need to air it for the world? Because if you've got somebody else, maybe you've got a lot, I, I doubt you've got long lines of people coming into this office. This probably isn't the most popular place to come, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. Uh, um, so, so I don't see that as a real issue. Uh, what I see is an attempt with the sign is to quash people's freedom of press rights under the First Amendment and Article Section 9. Okay. I don't agree with that. That's not the purpose of the sign. Uh, the purpose of the sign is to uh, protect the, the privacy of, of victims of crime, uh, you know, just, just like Marcy's Law right. says. Uh, to me, it's no different than, than the bathroom issue. I, I don't agree with you that a bathroom is not a publicly accessible place. The, the public is allowed in there, There's, and that's the purpose of a public bathroom. But there are privacy concerns <coughs> that, that are appropriate uh, right. to, to consider when you're talking about recording. In, in a situation like that. That's, that's how I view it. So Get that you disagree. So my, my, my guess, I guess the basic question to you would be then, if I go into the sheriff's office and sit there with my camera and they arrest me, what am I going to be charged with? Well, that's, I'm, I'm not going to get into no, that well, that's, scenario, that, that, that situation, well, that's, that's a different well, agency. Well, I'm, I'm letting you know that I may do that. So what would you charge me with? I'm, I'm, I'm giving you forewarning that if I do that or somebody else does that, because now you've got no qualified immunity, you've got a right to sue, and the courts are laying down rules for that. So how are you going to protect your people? How are you going to protect the law enforcement officers from that personal liability? Well, so that's, yeah. that's really what it comes down to, is what law are you going to use? Because you can do lawful things, but if it's unlawful, there's no law to sit there and sink your teeth into that matches the black and the white of the situation. Try, trying to create a criminal out of somebody for exercising a constitutional right seems to me that builds up a whole lot more liability. Okay. All I can control is how I interpret the, the law and, and how you, you're treated in this agency. Right. And nobody's tried to obstruct 
any of your recording or anything Absolutely like not. that. So um, that's what I'm in control. Yeah. I, and I agree with that, and I appreciate that. O other than the first time I was here when they came and took the bell away. Yeah. That, that was kind of silly. We, we got to admit it was funny. You got some laughs. Well, and I appreciate restricting your no, your and I appreciate right that. But I mean, with that sign, like I said, if I go to the sheriff's office, and and I respect Kenny Furlong, I I don't respect what Deputy No Bueno. What am I going to be charged with? I, I I mean, you can try two hundred seven two hundred trespassing, obstructing government offices. All of those have failed, especially when you read. Uh, 171, 1233. Okay. I mean, they all seem to be contradicting what the signs say. With, when you put all of those together and pile them all on teeth, what good is the sign? Okay, you're talking about a situation I, I can't address, I can't answer right. because I don't. You might have to. I, and, I, and I might, I might, I might go get my, I might go get myself arrested and see how that goes. Okay. Um, you know, I, I don't have any control about what you're going to do. I, I understand. I'm just, I'd rather not do that. That's why I'm having the conversation now to try to understand where you guys are coming from and what law you're actually enforcing or law you're applying because feelings don't really matter. Um, the black and the white of the law, the black and the white of our Constitution, I think that's what really matters as opposed to here's Marcy's law, which is really a, a constitutional issue that puts a burden on government to supply some services to the, the victims of crimes. Well, we've quoted the language, and, and I think it does more than that. It, it certainly does that, but I, I interpret it to do more than that. I interpret it to um, put us in a position where we have an obligation, if a victim doesn't consent to being recorded, uh, that, that their privacy is one of the things that Marcy laws, Marcy's Law specifically addresses and if they don't want to be recorded, they haven't consented to be recorded, that, that we can how, how do you that. that how matter. do you overcome the open view doctrine? That's not what they have the if, if plain view doctrine, if it's in plain view, you can see it, you can film it, you can record it. Uh, I, I mean, that's, like we said, this is a publicly accessible space. Plain view doctrine says that law enforcement, if they're looking through the windows of my car and they see something na naughty in there, they can you know, come and put me in handcuffs, but the same doctrine also says that the public is free to view whatever's in plain sight. And, and you can't restrict that, that view from people. Sure. So how do you overcome the plain view doctrine if somebody's sitting in there that's a victim, they're in plain view in a publicly accessible area. Does that publicly accessible area now preclude the First Amendment and Article, not, Article 1, Section 9 of the state constitution? How, how does that, how, how do you offset that? That's what I'm not... Okay, well, I've, I've been clear with my interpretation. You, you're, you're being clear with me. I'm just not understanding how you get overcome oh, well, I, all of the, these other I, issues. I do understand that you are you don't agree. Right. I, I get that. I respect that. Um, I, I do interpret that provision to um, put in place that prohibition, and I, I get that you don't agree. Yeah, so, so I mean, when, when there's a disagreement in the law, I think the only way to come about a conclusion is you either test the law or, or you come to some other conclusion as to, to how do you resolve that difference. Um, you know, so I'm really what my attempt here is how do I mitigate this issue prior to testing the law? And the only way I know to do that is to approach respectfully, ask questions logically, and try to try to make a, a logical legal argument with you mm -hmm. based on what the black and the white says. And if, okay. if it's not a legal argument, let me know and I'll No, I do I'll, I do understand I'll, exactly I'll what you're saying. How I'm and, coming and from it. I do understand exactly what you're saying. I will tell you there, uh, at least in Nevada, that, that I'm aware of, there is no case of saying you're right, and there's no case saying I'm right. 100% so right. I don't know. And, and, well, here's the other thing that I've been researching. In Nevada law, there are very, very, very few oppression of rights under the color of law cases out there. That statute's almost never been used on government. Don't you find that interesting? I've, I've not looked at that particular issue. We've not had the opportunity. Yeah, I, I was going through. Maybe I'm a bit of I am a bit of a nerd. Uh, I, I've got a subscription to LexisNexis, so I sit there and I try to read and understand what I'm I'm doing with these things, to make sure that I'm not being just a half cocked crazy maniac. That's not my intention. My intention is to make sure I'm bringing you a logical, legal reasoning based on what 
either the legislature has published or the courts have determined. Um, so hopefully I'm doing that and giving you something to think about as, as you're dealing with me. Um, because that's really my goal here is to get your thought process going. Is this guy right? Is he wrong? Is his argument good? Is, our, is his argument? I'm asking you to approach it like an attorney. Mm -hmm. Am I giving you a good argument? Can you counter the argument? Or, or do you have to go on ha some half-cocked um, legal tangent to try to bring it back into where you can argue it? And unless you can argue it very simply, I, I think it's a difficult thing to overcome because the Constitution is pretty black and white. No law shall be passed. Mm -hmm. So that, that's where I'm coming from. Anyways, I appreciate it. But for an information request, can she help me or you want to help me or who wants to? Uh, are you submitting something verbally or are you going to write it down so we can? Um, I can do it verbally. Essentially, all that I want is all of the records. And if you want to keep that, that's a copy for you. Okay. Like I said, it's, in, it's interesting case law because it's well, new stuff. Okay. It's uh, suing the state and officers for damages. So it's a civil uh, case. What, what's your first name again? Drew. Drew. Yes. And is it R-I-B-A-R? -R? Good memory, sir. Were, were there incidents of other people coming in with cameras being jerks, or just was it based on what I've been doing? Uh, there, I mean, we become aware of people um, who do this. I, I don't know that anybody's come into our office other than yourself. Okay. Uh, people have come into the, the courthouse for sure. A guy named Bay Area Transparency came through here a little while ago. Okay. And uh, he's, he's a much larger channel than what I've got. How, how do you want to receive the... Uh, oh, email. Okay, and what's that email? Uh, C-O-N-S-T. Two, the number two. Audit. Okay. At Gmail. And I think people recording everything that they're doing is becoming a much more commonplace thing now than it ever was before, at least in the, the time you and I have walked this earth. Yeah. Okay. And, and what, essentially what I want is all of the records on... Uh, uh, my arrest, all documents related to the prosecution, and all records related to my uh, <coughs> complaint about uh, Deputy Bueno and uh, his counterpart. And I don't know how to Just submit this request over at the sheriff's office. One second. Uh, related to complaint about Deputy, Deputy Bueno. And was there something after that? And he had a partner, that, I forget his partner's name, that was involved in my arrest. Uh, his partner was the one that impounded my truck. Partner. And I want to see what uh, happened with those investigations and whether they were, uh, what conclusion they came to. And all the notes and all the records involved in Because what I see happening in our, our country, our c local community, whether it's Carson or Reno or wherever here, people are tired of an un unaccountable government. I don't know if you watch my channel at all, uh, but I went to uh, the Washoe County Commissioner's meeting yesterday. Mm -hmm. it, it was, they started off with an inv invocation by a Satanist and a Satanic prayer. What a great way to start a public meeting true example of a First Amendment. Um, but the, the discussion was a couple of different issues. Uh, Commissioner Herman becoming the chair, uh, but the other issue was uh, the county manager, uh, Mr. Brown, uh, and his wife's drunk driving. I don't know if you've seen that video, no. but she was arrested for drunk driving at the same time a Hispanic man was arrested. And the conclusion of the two cases was very different. Uh, County Managers Brown, who blew four times over the legal limit, was stumbling when she tried to walk the white line. <laughs> it's an interesting video. She was obviously drunk, slurring her words, and she referenced how her husband was the county manager. She gets off with nothing, pretty much. Whereas at the same time, a Hispanic man is sentenced and convicted, and, and the full force of the law is put at him. 
So why does a government employee and his family have exemption from the law, whereas a normal human being doesn't get that same exemption? When you grew up, when I grew up, we're about the same age, were we always told that people like you that are authority, elected officials, people that work for the government, you're, you're held to a much higher standard. But is that really truthful? From my personal life experience, I, I find that that is untruthful. Because there's been qualified immunity forever. So I think what and, and I think the courts are recognizing this, that the people are tired of it. How do you hold people accountable? Well, allowing lawsuits is one way, but I, I think there's better ways to do that than suing people. I, I think, you maybe you disagree, you're an attorney, you went to school to sue people. I, I didn't, I run a business, but I think trying to educate people, communicate with people, um, and trying to mitigate issues that way is a much better way to deal with the problem. And that, that's really what I'm trying to do here, is, is, is mitigate the issues. Um, you know, I don't know if you know a guy named Andy McKay. Um, uh, name is familiar. To he's, me. I think he ran for something at some point. He's been know. around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, he used to be the chairman of the Nevada Transportation Authority years ago. Okay. Um, he's well connected. Um, I, I, and I really respected the way that he did his job. He was very accountable and very on top of things. And, and I think that if we can make our government more accountable to people, and you've got the power to do this, I think that you would be in a much better position. I don't know if you're terming out or, or anything like that yet, are you? Uh, no, I I three years okay. remaining on the term. Okay, well, but can you run again? Yeah. Okay, so you can run again, so that, that's a concern. So how can you make things better for the people, how they see things in a better light? Because law enforcement has gotten a bad rap over the last bunch of years. Things have happened in our society where it's not as respected like it used to be. And I think if, if law enforcement and government authority can be respected more than it is now, uh, I think society can be better. <clears throat> but what gets people to respect it? Well, that's if the government respects the people. And I think what's happened is government has lost the respect. Government has stopped respecting the people that they're supposed to serve. And in turn, the people have started to turn on government and stop respecting government. And I think that's a big problem with a lot of the drug issues we may be seeing and a lot of other things in society. So perhaps that could change some things in society and make it better. Um, just food for thought. Again, I'm, I'm just trying to put things in your mind. Maybe you'll think about it. Maybe something will catch you. Y you never know in life when somebody gives you something and you're going, I I've still got these from years ago when people have told me things. I still think about them. That guy was just right about that stuff. Sounds okay. like you might have had that same experience. So, um, okay. That's what I'm looking for is uh, the information on my arrest and the investigation on my complaint. Okay. We will uh, send you an email when, when we have the records that. Uh, that With, we within five days, let me know we're studying it out. I got you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being cordial to me. You're and always coming out. I appreciate that.